Welcome to It's All About the Questions, where learning to ask the right questions can help you achieve lifelong success. Now, here to help you ask all the right questions is award-winning author, international speaker, and business strategist, Laura Stewart. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the inaugural show of It's All About the Questions. I'm your host, Laura Stewart, and it is such a joy and pleasure to be here with you today on this gorgeous, gorgeous, beautiful Tuesday in Vero Beach, Florida. For those of you who are local, we are so lucky to live in this slice of paradise. For those of you who are listening on iHeartRadio or the show website, um, you really should be here because you're missing some amazing, amazing weather here. It's such a joy to live in a place like this. What I love about being able to be with you here on the radio is to share a lot of concepts and ideas and some amazing guests that you're going to get to meet over the course of the next bunch of months and weeks. Um, When I was growing up, my mom always said to me, Laura, you're a natural at talking. You just love to talk. You love to ask questions. And both my parents, my mom and dad, who um, lived here in Grand Harbor at Vero Beach, And they moved here 26 years ago, which is what ended up getting me here in town. They taught me that the questions you ask really determine the course of your life. It's not so much about the answers that you get, because if you don't ask the right questions, the answers you get aren't going to take you where you need to be going. And it was such an intriguing concept to me as a little girl that it was less about the answers. And and I asked my parents, why is that so important about asking questions? And the answer they gave me was, so often we ask questions to get the answers we want, not necessarily the answers we need. And when I was in business for a lot of years, um, I owned a a technology company. Yes, I am a geek. So I owned a a multi-state technology company. We had offices in Connecticut and Florida. Um, I was known for asking a lot of questions. And when I started the business, one of the things I realized very quickly was what set us apart from a lot of other technology companies was the questions that we asked our clients. You know, that people would call us up and say, well, we need you to get us a new computer or we're opening a second office or we're hiring more people. So can you just buy us this technology and put it in? And for me, that wasn't enough. I didn't want to just put equipment in. I wanted to understand somebody's business, what was driving them, what their goals were, because I feel that technology is so critical to helping a business succeed. And through technology, that's how you're listening to me today on the air. If we didn't have radio, if we didn't have the technologies that we have today, if we didn't have the Internet, for those of you around the world that are listening to my show right now, we wouldn't be having this conversation at all. One of my oldest memories of the power of questions was when I was in first grade. And I was about five, six years old at that point in time. Um, I was born in 1963. So yes, I am going to be 52 years old this year. When I walked into first grade, I was all excited because first grade was all about learning how to read. And my parents had been reading to me my entire life at that point in time. I loved reading. I loved anything about books and learning and just listening to my parents tell these wonderful stories. Dr. Seuss was one of my favorites and still is today. And as I was listening to the first grade teacher talking about, okay, here's the schedule, how we're going to learn to read, I found out I wasn't going to learn how to read on my first day of first grade. I was devastated. I was absolutely devastated. Well, what would any five-year-old kid do? I walked out of school. I actually went into the cloakroom. For those of you who don't know, um, cloakrooms are rooms between where we would hang our coats and things like that. But there was a door out from that room, out into the schoolyard. And I walked home the mile to home, and I shut up my door, and my mother's on the phone, talking to the principal of school, who's like, your daughter left. We don't know where she went. Now, back in 1968 or so, it was a lot different if you left school. I mean, and it was a lot easier to leave school at that point in time from grammar school. And mom asked me why I left, because she knew I loved school. And I said, well, they won't teach me how to read. 
And I'm like, I, I don't want to go back. I never want to go back. They're not going to teach me how to read. So, of course, my mother didn't accept that. And she brought me back to school. And she started asking them questions. And not just, you know, demanding that they do this, but she was trying to understand their why. Why wouldn't they teach me how to read? And what she discovered was they wanted to teach me how to read, but because my name started, my last name started with an S for steward, I was at the end of the alphabet. So I wasn't going to start the reading process for several more days, but I would be starting, but they were breaking it down by groups. And mom kept asking questions like, how did that policy start? Is there any way to change it? And within like five, 10 minutes, she got them to agree to start me the next day. It didn't matter that my name wasn't going to come up in that early group. I had a burning, burning, burning need to learn how to read, and they understood that. So they changed it for me so that I could be there because my mom asked the right questions. Yes, she wanted the answer of Laura will start tomorrow to learn to read, but she also got them to recognize that in some cases, the policy doesn't need to stay as it is. She understood their why, and because of that, she was able to change the outcome. So what my mom taught me that day was that questions, the right questions, can help you change the outcomes not only of that moment or that situation, but really about your life. And I love that. And I love asking why. And I'm sure those of you who are listening who have children out there um, hate that question. But I was very fortunate that my parents encouraged the why. And it took quite a while before their answer was because or because I'm your parent and I say so. They encouraged me to explore. And they took me to libraries. My favorite place still today are our libraries to get the answers because we didn't have the Internet back then. The only way you can do research and get answers was to get a set of encyclopedias, to ask questions of people, or to go to the library and find books that educated you and taught you about the world and life around you. So I really thank my parents for that. And I'm, I know my mom is probably listening today. Dad's listening up in heaven. But I'm sure my mom is listening today. And um, she's I'm a full-time caregiver for my mom. She has a lot of health issues. And I've had to learn how to ask really amazing questions from the medical professionals. And we're going to have guests on this show to tell you a little bit about this show that will help you if you are a caregiver, if you have some personal crises that are going on in your life and you don't know where to go for resources. What I love about being able to be with you here each week, every Tuesday, is I get to introduce you to some of the top experts in not only health and wellness, but on leadership. On publishing, I'm a published author, I'm an award-winning author. I, I hit four number one lists and three international bestseller lists and won a Nautilus Book Award because I was connected to the right people who helped me get a book deal. And my book, What Would a Wise Woman Do? Questions to Ask Along the Way, came out a couple of years ago. And I'm so fortunate that I was able to write a book about the power of questions to change your life. And how anybody can learn to ask better questions so that they, too, can have a better life. So we're also going to talk about caregiving. One of the things I learned recently is that I was isolating myself because I was taking care of my mom. And I got very isolated in terms of feeling nobody could help me out and that I had to do it all myself because my mom didn't want me to bring anybody in to help. So I stopped doing a lot of things. And I know there are a lot of other caregivers out there that feel there's no other options for them. And I'm going to bring on some experts that can help you navigate that whole process. We're not only going to have doctors on the show, we're going to have grief counselors on the show. I have a number of friends who spend their life's work helping people get through grief and understanding that it's okay to grieve in your own way. So we're going to have people on with that. We're going to have a call-in show. 
where you can ask me anything you want. And if you want to call in now and ask me anything, you can call the studio line at 772-778-3500. That's 778-3500, and you can ask me any question you want. I'm happy to coach people on the air if you're having a problem and you're not sure where to go or what to ask. Let me know, and we'll work through that. Another segment that I'm really, really excited about is something I'm calling the Find Your Eggs segment. How many of you have ever seen the movie Runaway Bride? One of my favorite movies of all time. It's with um, Richard Gere and Julia Roberts. And I'm calling this segment Find Your Eggs because there's a scene in the movie where Richard Gere asks Julia Roberts what kind of eggs she likes. But first, he asks all these other men that she's dated what their favorite eggs were. And every time she would answer, it was whatever eggs were the favorite of the guy she was dating at the time. And one day, she realizes that she doesn't know who she is and what she likes. And spoiler alert, um, hold your ears for this part if you don't want to know how the movie ends. She finally has this scene where she's in her apartment and she makes every kind of egg imaginable. There has to be 30 different kinds of eggs ranging from eggs benedict to scrambled eggs to poached eggs on plates. And she's tasting them all to find out what it is that really drives her. So the find your egg segment, we're going to talk about how you can find what it is that is your passion and your purpose. I'm going to bring experts on who have great processes and methods and ideas to help you discover what it is you want to be doing with the rest of your life and who you are. And some of these are my mentors. And we're also going to talk about some of the stuff in, in my book, which you can download free sample chapters and a workbook also to help you ask better questions at itsallaboutthequestions.com. So I'm excited to be with you here each week. And um, another great segment, and I mentioned I was a geek, we're going to do a geek to English segment where I'm going to have tech experts on and we're going to translate technology in a way that makes it approachable and easy. So if you're wondering about your iPhone or your iPad or computers or security or what you need to do to protect yourself at home, we're going to talk about that. So if there's something you have a question about, let us know. You can email me at laura at laurasteward.com. And let's get your questions answered. I'm going to have a lot of fun with that segment because I need to get my geek on lately. And thank you for listening so far this morning. We are about to go into commercial break and we'll be right back. Success comes from not only what you know, but also who you know. Welcome back to It's All About the Questions with award-winning author Laura Stewart. everyone. I'm Laura Stewart, and this is the inaugural show of It's All About the Questions, where we're going to be talking to amazing experts about leadership, choosing your own power, how to navigate that balance of work and life with um, international speaker and a friend of mine from Singapore, Cheryl Lu Shang, another day. We're also going to talk with Patricia Knoll about how you can be good with me how self-esteem can often really be termed other-dependent self-esteem. You know, does your self-esteem derive from outside of you? Or are you really good with me inside? We're going to talk to Deborah Lewis, one of the first females to graduate from West Point. She was a member of the first graduating class of West Point, and she retired after 30 years as a colonel in the U.S. Army. Amazing story, amazing things that she's done. Um, She's now living in Hawaii, so we're going to have to figure out that time change thing because it's about a six-hour time change to Hawaii, and this show is live at 11 a.m., but I think she'll do that for me. We're also going to have some um, amazing authors and coaches and um, people and doctors that I've discovered over the years look at medicine in a very, very different way. And having been misdiagnosed a number of times in my life, being told that you're sick because you're depressed because you're not with a man. That was my favorite one. It was from the chief of medicine of a top hospital in Connecticut. And he just kept saying to me, 
yeah, yeah, you're sick because you're depressed because you're not with a man. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't believe that. And I had several doctors say similar things, and I began to think that that was the truth. And then one day it hit me. I know me and my body better than any doctor that I walked into for 15 minutes, and I know there's something wrong with me. So I began asking myself questions. When did the change happen? Did anything happen to trigger the event? Do, where do I feel bad? What are my true symptoms? And how can I describe them to somebody in a way that will help them understand what's going on for me? And then I started asking other questions of other people. Tell me who the top doctor is that you've gone to who actually was willing to listen to you. And I eventually got to this wonderful doctor in Connecticut, Dr. Amiran Katz, who discovered that I had been bit by a tick and I had um, an illness called babesiosis. It wasn't just Lyme. It was this other thing, which is um, a little closer to malaria. And it was actually rampant in my body. I had very high levels on it. But my blood work had been misread. And he was able to resolve the issues once they discovered what the problem was. And he, he laughed at me and he, he laughed and he said, you know, it's not all in your head. You really are sick. He goes, but it is in your head because there were some issues in the brain related to this illness. And he said, we'll take care of it. We'll get you well. And I want you to know that you're not alone out there if you're having health issues, if you're in a business, you're an entrepreneur or you're a career person, male or female, working in a corporation, and you're, you're looking and you're struggling and, and you know there has to be something better out there. There is. I promise you there is. You just need to ask the right questions. And we'll talk about how you can do that. One of my favorite questions to ask is actually the title of my book, What Would a Wise Woman Do? And you're going to ask, well, why is that such a great question? Well, I'm going to tell you, the reason what would a wise woman do is such a great question. And you can say, what would a wise man do as well? The idea is you are now stepping outside the frame, the picture frame of your own situation in your own life. If you ask, what would a wise woman do? You're asking, what would somebody who has more information, more knowledge, more wisdom than me ask or do in this particular situation. It gives you permission not to have all the answers and to go out and seek it. I love asking that question on a regular basis for myself because it gives me an awareness that there's so much knowledge out there and there are so many people that can help us. We just have to be willing to ask. My dad was so great at this. He'd always say to me, look, if you don't ask, they can't say yes. If you don't ask, you're saying no for them. So who in your life can you ask for help or ask for knowledge that you don't have? There's probably somebody right next to you. Right now, this moment, somebody in your Rolodex, yes, I am older, so I still think about Rolodexes. You can call it your contact list in your iPhone or your computer if you prefer. I like Rolodex. It's very visual. It used to be very tactile. You can move cards back and forth, physical pieces of paper that had different phone numbers on it. But just go through your mental Rolodex. Who do you know that might have an answer for you? And if you don't know somebody... Call into the show at 778-3500. Tell us what the problem is you've got going on, and maybe we know somebody that can help you get the answers you need. So after you ask yourself, what would a wise woman do? There's something else that I think is really important to help you think through what's going on in your business and your life. And one of those things is to ask yourself this. Why did I set the goal that I set? This one was a huge eye-opener for me when um, I got divorced the first time. I'm twice divorced, recently got divorced last year. And the first time I got married, I wasn't even dating the man that I got married to. 
he and I had broken up. We had dated back and forth a, a number of times, and we had broken up, and I was dating uh, another amazing man when this gentleman proposed to me. And I'm saying, well, why are you proposing now? <laughs> I mean, we're not even dating. And he said, I-, I love you. My life's better with you in it. Please marry me. And I said, you know, I need some time to think about it. I, I was just devastated, and I was angry, and... I started thinking about it, and the only question I was asking myself at the time was, do I want to marry him? Do I want to marry him? And it ended pretty much after four months for a lot of reasons, and we went into counseling to try to work through the situation. And when we're working through the situation, the counselor asked me, well, why did you want to get married? This was mind-blowing to me because it's very different than do I want to marry him. Why do I want to get married opens up so many possibilities. What I realized was I wanted to get married because back then I defined success by being married and having children. Now, I had a successful career. I owned my own home. I had the respect of my peers. I was very involved in philanthropy back then. But the only thing I hadn't checked off on my box was marriage and children. And to me, I wasn't successful without those. And he asked me, and I invested all this time in the relationship, so I said yes. And I realized at that moment that if I had known my why behind saying yes to him or getting married, I wouldn't have married him. So when I got married the second time, I was asking myself a whole series of other questions, and I don't regret the second marriage, and it was amazing, you know, in the beginning while it lasted, and then things change, and sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. People move to different places in their lives, and you do what you have to. But if you're unwilling to look at the why, why I'm doing something, why I'm thinking what I'm thinking, why I'm feeling what I'm feeling, then you really can't move forward because you don't know if what you're asking or what you're doing is really what you're meant to be doing and what you want to be doing. It could be somebody else's want for you. So I encourage you to ask yourself, what would a wise woman do? And also explore your why. And when we come back from the news break, I'll tell you how you can do that. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. And during the the news break and the commercial break, I was checking my email and some texts, and I happened to notice a a post on my social media about the radio show from Jennifer Rosenwald, a friend of mine up in Connecticut, who said, Laura, I'll be there. Sing it with me. And I have to tell you, Jennifer, thanks so much for that, because it really made me smile and me laugh. And that is such a great song. And I am not going to insult everybody on this show by actually trying to sing I Will Be There. Um, But thank you for joining me. And Leslie Knight, thank you for reminding me that there are a number of listeners out there who are not in the local area. So if you do want to call in, the phone number to call in is 772 778 3,500. Yes, you do need the area code if you are outside of Vero Beach, Florida. So it's 772-778-3500. Looking forward to hearing from you out there and answering any questions you may have about the right questions you need to be asking to change your life. So um, before the break, we were talking about how to ask why to really understand the root of why you are um, on the course you're on, why you're stuck where you're stuck. And I said I would share with you a technique that I use with my clients to help them break through that and really take their business and their life to the next level. I spend a lot of time with business clients, and because I, I spend a lot of time with business clients, I also end up doing some life coaching uh, because really if you are – working, your life is affected by it. So I'm going to be bringing guests on that can help balance all of that out for you. But one of the te- the um, exercises that I suggest people do, and you can download these at itsallaboutthequestions.com. There's a workbook that you can download, and this is one of the first exercises, is what I call the why exercise. So here's what I want you to do, not while you're driving your car, if you happen to be listening to this, driving your car, but if you're sitting somewhere safely or you can pull over on the side of the road if you're listening, think about this. 
I want you to think about a goal that you have. Some, whether it's a business goal, whether it's a life goal, a health goal, whatever it may be, think about your goal. And once you have that in your mind, ask yourself why. Why that goal? Now, the first time you do this, it's probably going to be, well, because it's what I want to be doing. But we're not going to stop at just asking yourself why once. I want you to ask yourself why five times. As I mentioned earlier, for those of you who have children, you know that the why question often gets followed by why, 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 and you're sick of it. And people will tell you never ask people why they're doing something because it makes them defensive. Well, in my opinion, asking why of yourself is the most critical thing you can do to catapult you to the next level. So write down your goal, think about your goal, get it in your mind, get it on a piece of paper, and then ask yourself why that goal. And ask yourself why five total times. I guarantee you, I've never seen this fail. By the time you've written your why the fifth time, you will have uncovered the true why. Now, I I gave you an example of this when I was talking about my first marriage not working out. And the counselor had asked me, why do I want to get married? Well, the first time I answered it was because he asked me. And the second time, it was a little bit deeper. And it's, well, because I love him. And I did. By the fifth time is when I got to, because that's how I defined success. And I wasn't successful until I was married and had children. Do you see the difference from that first why of because he asked me down to because that's how I define success? Now, once you've gotten your five whys listed out, the next thing I want you to do is look at it and go, is that my goal for me or someone else's goal for me? This has always been one of those questions that I, I... I'm so moved when I get emails or social media posts from people who have read my book or heard me speak somewhere around the world about what they come up with when they get this why. I had one person come up to me. She was studying for her MBA. She had been in the financial business her entire business career, and she decided she needed an MBA to take her to the next level, and she said she did the exercise in the room when when I... was speaking, she came up to me and said, I don't want to get an MBA. I don't want to be in finance. It's so not what I want to do. And I said, so what was the, whose goal was it for you? And she said, it was my parents. Everybody in my family has been in this industry. And I get that very frequently from people who are um, doctors or lawyers or um, have followed in their family businesses, whatever it may be. And then I get other people who by the time they get to the why, they realize, well, it was somebody else's goal for me, but it's really my goal for me too. Once you connect to the why and you understand if it's your want for you or somebody else's want for you, that's when amazing things can happen. I recently was um, working with a client who was totally burned out on their business. They had had the business for like 20 years and they were thinking about selling their company. So we started going through a lot of analysis on, and I gathered a lot of data. I spent a bunch of time in their offices understanding their business and what was going on to give them some guidance on who they should talk to or whether the business was sellable or not. And then I sat down with the owner and I I asked him to do this exercise about why he wanted to sell. And he realized that he really didn't want to sell, but he was so frustrated with aspects of his business and things that he hated doing that all he saw now, every time he woke up and walked into the business were these things he hated doing. Once he connected to the why and what was really going on, he was able to delegate the aspects of the business he really hated doing to other people who it was their strength. 
his business has now tripled because he has rejuvenated it. And he has also gotten rid of a number of clients that he just didn't like. They um, didn't pay on time. They were troublesome. Um, And in some cases, he just didn't like them because they were mean people. But he felt he needed to keep them on as clients because they were clients. And he, he passed them off to some other people, and they're doing great with their new vendors. What I am saying is if you look at your why, really look at your why, you have the possibility of shifting what you feel and how, what lights you up. I mean, I, I often get asked by people, so Laura, what lights you up? And I, can't, I have such a hard time answering that question until I understood why they were asking it. For a lot of people, they ask that because they're trying to figure out what's lighting them up. And I realized I had trouble answering what lights me up because I was living so much of my life for other people. And when I would answer with what lights me up, it was always about everybody else. Now, if somebody asks me what lights me up, it's, it's simple things, really simple things. It's talking to you on the air. I had an internet-based radio show for a year called Entrepreneur Masterclass, but it, it was a show that was wonderful, but I recorded it from home with a studio in Texas. I love being able to come into the studio here and record with you and be with Jody, my amazing producer. Thank you so much, Jody, for helping me out with this. And the team, Rhett Palmer, to, uh, to teach me more about radio. I love being with people. I want to get reconnected into my community. I love my global community. But what lights me up is being able to walk down the street um, and see people. Another thing that really lights me up, is when I'm speaking and somebody comes up to me and shares a story about how their life was changed because they asked why, because they were willing to look deeper into what was going on in their life. Seeing my mom smile and have joy on her face, that is another thing that lights me up. They're very simple things. That, and I had Easter dinner over my house on Sunday, and a number of my friends came over and Last year on Easter is when my husband said that he wanted a divorce. So Easter had this negative connotation for me. And my friends came over because they loved me and they knew that I wanted to change the energy around it. And that moment I realized that what lights me up is being myself and then seeing that reaction out there when I am authentically me. I love that. I, I love sharing who I am. And knowing that who I am can make a difference for somebody. So let me know what's going on for you and how lighting yourself up can light up the people around you. This has been such an amazing um, hour for me on this show today. I'm looking forward to next week where we're going to have several guests on the show talking about leadership and health and wellness and um You'll just have to tune in next week to see who those special guests are. If you go to itsallaboutthequestions.com, I'm going to be listing my guests coming up. <clears throat> and the immortal words of the narrator for the Batman show, join me next week, same bat time, same bat channel, or as my friends know me, I'm all about the angels. So join us here across the ether and remember that the right questions truly can change your life. So what are you asking yourself and others today? Have a great day, everyone. You've been listening to It's All About the Questions, starring Laura Stewart. (laughs) Connect with Laura. So I am laughing right now so hard because I thought that the clock said 11.58 and it was the end of the show and Jody just goes, you actually have 10 more minutes. So welcome back, everyone. That is the beauty of live radio. I love it. Um, You've got me, authentically me, all with blips and blobbles and and bloopers. And uh, you know what? That's what it's all about. Life doesn't happen perfectly. And I've totally gotten over trying to be perfect because you know what? It was way too much pressure on myself to be perfect. So you're going to get me with mistakes and all. And we're going to have a good time talking about asking the right questions 
And um, I hope you're all laughing with me. And those of you who stayed on the air listening, we're back with more from me. And it's all about the questions. So thank you, Jody, for laughing with me. I greatly appreciate that. I want to talk about uh, geek life um, and translating geek to English. When I started out as a little girl and trying to figure out what I wanted to do, you know, and I went through the typical, I wanted to be a cowgirl. Actually, I wanted to be a cowboy. I didn't want to be a cowgirl. Um, I wanted to be a doctor because my brother was always sick. He died when I was 10 years old. He had a congenital heart defect and he, we were always in and out of doctor's offices. So I want to be a doctor because I wanted to be able to fix him. I, I wanted to be a baseball player. I wanted to be an architect. My dad was a builder. He built beautiful communities and homes. And I wanted to be an architect to be a part of his business. And then 1969 happened and the moon landing and the Apollo program. And living here in Florida, uh, from my backyard, I got to see all the shuttle launches and all the rocket launches go up. And I really wanted to be an astronaut, but I didn't want to go in the military. So I said, well, technology was the way to go. Because back then, that was really the only way that, number one, a woman could get even close to the space program. And it was a way of possibly being involved with space without being on um, in the military. So I started getting my geek on, as I say, and, and learning about technology. And it just seemed like it came natural to me. And I loved it. I, I love the fact that it just made sense. And it was less about it being linear and more about it being logical. It, there was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Things worked or they didn't work. Most of the time, it, if it didn't work, it was because of the human input, the human error that went into um, making technology work. And as I, as I grew up and went to school, the first computers came in, and they were computers that had cassette decks attached to them, which did all the programming. Those were the first portable computers. Prior to that, it was huge mainframe computers and punch cards and, and tape and all this other stuff, and computers filled rooms. Favorite movie of mine is Desk Set with Spencer Tracy and Katherine Hepburn, and I thought technology is such a cool way of learning. So I, I went to school and got a degree in computer science and technical writing and eventually went on and got a master's in management and organizational behavior. And my astronaut dreams went away. I still to this day would love to be an astronaut. And uh, I've had the good fortune to meet several astronauts and, and the head of NASA. And I, I'd love to go into outer space. But what I realized was my why was I wanted the Star Trek version, the romanticized version of space travel. I, I didn't want to go up in a rocket that could potentially blow up. I mean, I know Star Trek ships can blow up and things like that. But I wanted the whole idea behind space travel, which was everybody working together, learning new things, exploring new cultures. And for me, it was about exploration on this show, I get to explore with you about amazing topics around leadership and health and publishing and wellness. I, I know out there, <clears throat> there are a number of you who want to write a book, who are just uncertain how to do it. I'm going to be bringing my publisher on and I'm going to have agents on the show and I'm going to have other people that can help you get your book out. And we're going to talk about the realities of publish publishing. People are like, well, how do you make money writing a book? You know, I, I can quit my job. I can do whatever. Well, publishing is a business just like anything. So we'll uncover, we'll open the book to the inside world of publishing so that you can learn what's involved between self-publishing, hybrid publishing, or the traditional method of publishing. We'll talk to people who have been successful at it and who have not I recently reread Stephen King's book on writing. I love that book. I love that man. He's so real, so authentic. And somebody asked him, do you write for the money? I mean, he's obviously been highly, highly successful and made millions upon millions of dollars writing. And he said, no, I still write for the love of it, for the joy of it. And when I write and when I'm on the air with you, it's what lights me up. I love doing it. I love sharing the wisdoms I've learned they, they may not be right for you or they may be right for you. That's up to you. 
And it's all about the questions, the questions you ask yourself and the questions you ask other people around you. Only you will know if the question you're asking is getting you the answer you need or the one you want. And a simple way to to figure out if you're asking the right question is to get quiet with yourself when you get the answer and, and figure out, well, how do I feel about that answer? Does it make me uncomfortable? Does it give me joy? Where will that answer take me? So I like to think of asking questions like that Gordian knot or um, if anybody's seen a nest of Christmas tree lights when you go to pull them out before you put them up for the year, you put them away so nice and neat and then they you pull them out and they're just like this total rat's nest of wires and you can't quite figure out how to untangle them. So questions for me are like that. You want to, before you start tugging or asking the question, you want to think about where that's going to lead you. So before we end the show today, I want to take you through one last exercise on asking the right question. So think of a question that you want to ask somebody because you need an answer. Now think of three possible answers you can get to that question. If any of those answers are yes or no, then you want to throw away that question and start with a new one. You following me so far? If you're asking a question and the answer you get is yes or no, you want to throw away that question and come up with a new one. If any of the possible answers you can get are an open-ended question, open-ended answer that leads you to ask another question, do that. So in your mind, ask another question. Get, think of three answers. You're going to continue that process until you can't think of a single answer to your question. And that's the question I want you to start with and go find somebody to ask that question to because that person you're going to ask to has another perspective. And they're hopefully going to be able to give you the answers you need. If not, go ask somebody else. That is the beauty, the beauty of asking the right questions and asking one of my favorite questions of all time, which is what would a wise woman do? My friend Leslie just texted me. Um, she's an amazing person, and I'm hoping she will agree to be on the show. She has great knowledge about teamwork and how do you get teams to work effectively, and she's a Trekkie, and she loved the movie Desk Set. So yay, Leslie. Um, yay, Trekkie. Um, what the Star Trek universe taught me was that you need to shift your perceptions in order to ask the right questions. So I encourage you, look outside yourself for the answers that you need and the questions that you need. And if you don't know what to ask, go to your friends and say, what should I be asking myself today? Because remember, the right questions can change your life. Join me next week. You've been listening to It's All About the Questions, starring Laura Stewart. Connect with Laura at itsallaboutthequestions.com and download a free workbook that will help you ask better questions starting today.